welcome to this week's tech tip. Since we had trouble in the Indian Ocean with the autopilot, that's what we're going to talk about today. First I'll tell you about the autopilot that I had trouble with and the reasons why. It's a Raymarine Evo 100 sail wheel pilot. Here is the, uh, the drive system. There's the motor which comes through the bulkhead here with a cog that connects to a belt which runs around this race and drives the steering. Other components of the autopilot include the P70 head uh, which is a good controller, the EV1 sensor which is basically the gyro of the system and the EV100 course computer. Now, the, this system is rated at 7,500 kilo boat displacement or 16,000 pound boat displacement. Um, this boat is a little heavier than that, but not much more. Rated at seven and a half ton, my boat is about eight and a half ton. So there's a good, good chance that this would work. Now, what I've found though, don't be put off by those numbers. They're just a guide put out by Ray Marine. You could have a hundred ton cruising ship, but if it was feather light to steer, why not use that sort of an autopilot? Maybe not a hundred ton. But this boat is light to steer. It's very uh, friction free in the steering. However, conditions we experienced in the Indian Ocean, um, I haven't experienced elsewhere. Just a quartering wind, so we had a uh, half quartering strong wind, 30, 35, 40 knots, but mostly it was the wave action. Now the Indian Ocean has two wave patterns, one from the southeast, one from the southwest, that crisscross and make a washing machine effect. It's really hard work on any autopilot. It was hard work on my arms when the thing failed. We could only do about two hour shifts in the rough weather because my arms and my back were just killing me from the amount of action. Almost half wheel locks each way to stay straight. Because the wave is pushing the stern of the boat across and then it swings around this way so it's constantly fishtailing. Really hard work for the autopilot. And I don't blame it at all for breaking the belt. Um, what was happening, the belt would, I guess, stretch a tiny bit. There's a friction adjustment back here, which you would tighten a little bit so that it would grab again. And there's only a limit to that. Uh, we tighten it up two or three clicks and bang, the belt will break. Here's a belt here. So this is a replacement Raymarine belt for the uh, EV100 wheel. Um, very quite light, you know, they are light duty. Uh, and it is about 65 US dollars for this little piece of plastic. So I did have a spare one on the Indian Ocean crossing, but I didn't want to put it on because it would just break within a day or so because the conditions were getting uh, more severe. So what I ended up doing, I looked at the options for the next level of autopilot that I needed to buy it was another three to three and a half thousand US dollar. And that's just replacing the motor and the course computer. The P70 display, the EV100, I could keep using that. When we got to Cape Town, come across a guy who had bought a heap of stock from gunboat catamarans when they went broke here in South Africa. Uh, and he bought all their stock of parts. He was selling autopilots. Now this one that he had, the gunboats can be a big boat, 20 ton catamaran. Um, so he only had the Type 2 rotary drive. It's a Raymarine rated to 20 tons. My boat's only nine, maybe eight and a half, nine. And the course computer, the ACU 400, which puts out the big current to that rotary drive. Uh, but his price was good enough, we came to a, uh, an agreement and I've placed it, fitted it in Jupiter. Now, one thing I was worried was 
that it would use too much battery power. It says it on the specs it uses between four and a half up to sort of eight amps I think it was for uh, to drive this this motor. I don't want to use that much power for the batteries. Um, so what I did do is I kept both autopilots. I just need to plug and unplug a few the, the um, rudder reference sensor and the course computer. And now I have two autopilots. When it's light conditions, I'll use the Evo 100, which is light on the battery power. And if it gets heavy, then I can use the big Type 2 rotary motor. But anyway, let me show you. Come have a look here. The motor is mounted the other side of this bulkhead, and this is the drive cog that comes through. Um, had to get these cogs specially made here in South Africa. Fairly cheap though. And then the drive train goes up to the steering. So that's the steering axle just here. That's my normal drive cog for my steering. And that just pulls on cables that run to my tiller bar. And this is the new steering cog for the autopilot. And it took a little bit of fiddling around. I even had to put down a bumper because the two chains would interact with each other. They'd clank and tie up here. So I've put this bumper to hold the steering cables out. I'm not sure how that long that will last, but we'll see how it goes. And up in here is the new course computer, the ACU 400. And all I need to do is to change computers, I just have to unplug the rudder reference here. Got the ACU 400 and the ACU 100. Oh, and I can turn off the power specifically to the ACU 100. Here's a lesson that I learned the hard way. The EV1 sensor, this guy here, little flying saucer guy is uh, should be one meter away from any electricals or anything that may influence it and you know what I found the iPad which has got metal circuit boards etc I put this up here which is probably that far from the sensor and suddenly the autopilot will go Rrr! so that's in a bad position but now I'm aware of it I'll just keep that under control but yeah we can't put my iPad there up here is okay but right there no good here's a good boat hack for you guys uh, Raymarine sell autopilot bundles uh, which are missing the rudder reference sensor I guess to keep their prices low they cut out some important gear and they'll say in the manuals that it is thoroughly recommended to have a rudder reference sensor. Uh, these to buy extra uh, are 240, 250 US dollars each. All that's inside is a potentiometer, a variable resistor. So you go to the electronic shop and buy one for a few, few dollars. Here, put one in. Uh, I, this is the steering axle that's connected to my steering wheel. So this pot is 4.7k, cost three or four dollars from the electronic shop, and doesn't matter as long as you're fairly close to that 5k pot is okay. Doesn't matter too much how many turns, because all the ACU is looking at is the change in voltage through that pot. So the reference wire or the zero position of the rudder is the middle leg or the the wiper of the pot and it should be about two and a half volts when you turn the wheel one way the voltage goes up maybe up to five volts turn the wheel the other way the voltage goes down to close to zero volts and if you look outside at the uh, rudder reference it works beautifully and that's all the information you need to give your boat uh, to give your autopilot for three or four dollars instead of 250 Remember, knowledge keeps you cruising.